and welcome to this week's episode of the How to Film Weddings podcast. That's right, a podcast teaching you how to film weddings. Nick Miller is with me. I'm John Bunn. I'm really excited about today's episode, but first, Nick, it's the last day of Complete Wedding Videography course launch. The weekend just happened. It's getting warm outside. There's so many things going on. I think I had too much coffee again this week. I went and saw Ed Sheeran a week ago. I'm just in a good mood. Help me. Take this burden from me. How are you? What's new why, with you? Why is it that now <laughs> us 260-something episodes into this podcast, we did not say, hello, welcome to How to Film Weddings, where we teach you how to film a wedding. Why Why? Why are we just now saying that? Like, why didn't Here's we say that all along? Maybe Blake, the editor, could go back just real quick. 271 episodes. This is number 272 today, I think so. <laughs> That's so many freaking episodes, but I think he can use AI to fix it. Everything is fixable with AI. Nick, <laughs> oh you're wearing word. a Royals. You're wearing a Royals hat. They Dude, suck. I don't want to talk about it too much. Terrible. Oh my word. They're so terrible. bad. They're baseball so bad. Sucks, just in general, yeah. baseball's the worst. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of how I feel about it with my team being so bad. But anyway, that's good. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, to jump into this, the Complete Wedding Videography course is on sale. Today, as we launch this episode, it is the last day uh, that you can purchase it. We are going to lock it up until later in the fall. And so uh, you might want to head over to completeweddingvideography.com, completeweddingvideography.com, so that you can snag it up for as little as one forty seven. You get started for one forty seven today. Uh, John, uh, we last week did a live training on, um, you know, uh, <laughs> building. I forgot. I forgot the name of it. It um, was amazing. So good. It was, that amazing. We it was so good. No, no. Building. Little. Building packages that sell. We did a live training and we thought that this information was really helpful. And so we wanted to repurpose uh, that and reuse it and put it in the podcast because it's going to be really good information for you. And not um, there's there's more people that listen to our podcast than tune into our live training. And so we wanted to give all this information to you. Oh, I, I'm just and you're laughing at me. I don't I don't. I, I just, it's just funny <laughs> when you have best good buddies and you oh, watch gosh. sometimes it's like the office when Michael starts a sentence, sometimes he doesn't know where he's going with it. But this one, and, I actually didn't know where oh, I was okay. going. Well, it just, it, it was just, a really the, good the execution. The execution was bad. Um, it was a really good was, training. Yes. The training was really good. And so we want to share that again with you. So uh, here in a second, we are going to jump over and cut over. We're going to give you a little uh, preview of what's in the course. And then we are going to get into the building packages is building collections that sell and we hope that it will help you in your business john anything before uh before we cut over to that no no i think we're good like <laughs> the producer his eyes are beaming he's like please get to the episode and you're probably doing the same thing so yeah i think uh let's head on over to this week's episode okay yo yo uh, nick miller what is up what How is are up? you where am I? How are you? Oh, I'm I'm doing I'm doing well. I'm doing fabulous. Doing great. It's a good good Monday. I know, that we I know got where you here. are. Yeah, I I, it, I don't know. I heard that weird. I thought you said where well, are you? We were getting a lot of stuff figured out right before we hit record, so that makes sense. Actually, <laughs> yeah, Blake was. <laughs> yeah, Blake was. Ten seconds before we were supposed to go live, we just hear him go, "Uh oh!" And we're like, "Uh what?" <laughs> Uh, What's going on there? So. We appreciate you, Blake. You are mm -hmm, awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so. For those out there that are watching live, let us know that you can hear us loud and clear um, where you're watching from. And if you think you should win the $500 B&H gift card we're giving away and a pricing guide from our shop, which yeah. goes right along with what we're talking about today, building packages that sell, walking through packages and how to get them to really uh, get you the most bang for your buck, things like that. So if you can hear us, let us know what's up, Mark and Jenna. Hope you guys are doing well. Super power pictures, Nick. Do you see that? Yeah. yeah. Boom. Yeah. Jeez. So. Keith, what's up? <laughs> they have Mark and Jenna have dibs on the cash, they say. Oh, so that's they good. Say. Okay. And, yeah. and right now we don't have a ton of people watching, so your chances of winning are very, very high. So... I have a feeling that number is going to go up through the hour, though. So, I would um, hope so. Nick, I would hope so. Yes. before we get into any of this today, happy yeah. Complete Wedding Videography Open Enrollment Week. 
Yeah, we've yeah, made so it. This is this is a good week have, for us. This is a good week. Um, we are here today. We in celebration of us opening enrollment for our complete wedding videography course. And so, uh, if you would like some information about that, um, you know, we'll be talking about it. Uh, you can head over to completewedingvideography.com. It's uh, three modules: business, shooting, and editing. Over thirty hours of content in there. It's pretty much everything that John and I known about doing weddings and we've shot, I don't know, combined like 800 something ish yeah, combined. I don't know a lot of weddings. And so uh, just sharing all the information that we know um, that's in there. Uh, John, why don't you talk about a few things that are maybe included in it? Yeah. Um, so a couple of the things besides the business, the shooting, the editing, the brand new shooting module. Um, if you've seen over time, we have built a, uh, a, a digital template library with a bunch of digital products. We have pricing guides, which we're going to give one of those away today. But if you join the course, you're going to get all three of those, our luxury, our modern, and our adventure pricing guide to really show what you offer really well uh, visually. So those are there. Our email templates, there's over 50 of them. I think it's, is it over 60? I think it's might be pushing 60 of them now. I think it's 65. Yeah. I think. Okay. Emails, email templates for you to run your whole business. If you're writing the same email more than once, it needs to be in a template. It's going to help you be more efficient. So those email templates are included in the digital products. Our consultation guide is going to help you do better with your consultations, our budget sheets, our our year at a glance calendar. There's all kinds of digital products that you literally, if you implement the system that we have done here, this is going to yield you a six figure business. It's really, I mean, it's the whole gamut from getting going all the way till uh, post delivery everywhere in between all the digital templates. And then literally us walking you through and mentoring you on how to do all those things. Yeah, and a few other bonuses that we have included in it are uh, some real Zoom calls that John and I have done. We actually uh, recorded them, get permission from our couples as we're doing this, but we're recording them and uh, uploading those. Some of them have booked with us, some of them haven't booked with us, but I know that like one of them on there is John booking like a $15,000 package and you can actually hear him and see him and learn from him doing that, no big deal. We also have several behind the scenes videos, uh, John at weddings and myself at an elopement and uh, just so you can and see how we are doing things like on an actual wedding day, go in and talk about those. But John, for this one, uh, for this launch, we did something new, something that we've been really excited about for a while. So I'm going to let you talk about that. We're introducing this and then maybe have a little video to play. Yeah. Yeah. Y yes. One of the big feedbacks that we had when we recorded the course a couple of years back was we love that you're telling us what you are doing when it comes to filming the wedding day, but we would really love if you could show us instead of telling us how to plug into a DJ's board and get good audio. Could you show us instead of telling us how to pose couples, show us, how do you do your ceremony? How do you might, how to, how to, how to, all these questions, like, how do you do this? How to film weddings is our name, of course. So we thought, what better way to do that to, than to actually film a wedding? And instead of just like a behind the scenes where someone's fly on the wall filming us, which we have in the course, we really felt like if we were able to have complete control, we could show you literally everything that we do on a wedding day. So that's what we did. We rented a venue, we paid a planner, we hired a florist, cake maker, everything beginning to end. We hired a DJ, a uh, lighting company, all the stuff so we can show you everything. So we brought in models, this couple that just got married, and we filmed for two days in Tulsa, everything, ev literally everything. So we're really excited about that. That's the new uh, section of the course. Did I say enough? Is that enough? I think so. So anyway, it is an updated shooting module new for 2023. As you can see there on the slide that it's uh, some of the highlights, you know, we have prep, we have miking the couples, we have interviews, uh, letter readings. We talk about plugging into the DJ board and lighting and all this stuff. Uh, it's really from establishing shots through um, the grand exit and everything in between. And we get to actually uh, break it down and, and pause and share what it is that we're thinking and what we're doing about. And uh, if, if you're kind of on the fence, we are doing a promo, a special promo for the first 15 uh, that purchase this. If you just type in the promo first 15, you're going to get $100 off 
And you are also going to receive two one-hour group coaching calls with John and myself. So uh, that's that's kind of the, the incentive for you to go ahead and jump in there and get that uh, as soon as you can. So, John, that's kind of our little pitch there for the course. Anything you want to add before we, uh, you know, jump into into this uh, training that we have today? Uh, if you're interested at all in joining the course, uh, we are not one to twist your arms, anything like that. But if you have questions, just send us a, a DM on Instagram at How to Film Weddings. We'll be there checking out things all week. We've got all kinds of live things going on this week. And uh, yeah, so I'm really excited about it today. We're going to be teaching out of our business module in the course. Um, we're going to get to as much of it as we absolutely can within this hour. We want to be respectful of your time. Um, but this is just a taste of what's in the course. Um, if you've already joined the course, um, you know, listen in today, learn more. We update this. We keep updating things. Um, and let, let us know in the comments what you think so far of the course. And before we get moving, uh, we mm -hmm. got a handful of you on here live on YouTube. If you think this content is good or going to be good, hit the thumbs up. It'll help us out a ton. All right, yeah, Nick, definitely. building packages that sell. Mm -hmm. Let's let's get into it. I'll let you start. Let, yeah, yeah. Building packages that sell. Let's get into this. I know that this is a question that a lot of people uh, want to know. And the question that they ask first off and foremost is, how do I know what it is that I need to charge? I know that whenever I got going, um, you know, it was like, what what do I do? What are other people doing? How do I need to figure this stuff out? And I was just very going uh, willy nilly about it, kind of just throwing out anything that would stick. And uh, those of you, maybe when you first got started, you charged way too low, offered way too much, and you really bit yourself in the butt, uh, you know, a few months later, a couple of years later. So the number one thing that we recommend whenever it comes to figuring out what you should charge is you need to know your numbers. You need to understand how much money you need to make and how much money it is that you need to live. So there's a little formula here that we would like to help you walk you through just a little bit um, so that you can understand um, what you need to do. So what you need to do is figure out how much money it is that you need to live. And this is maybe, um, you know, and figuring out all the stuff like specifically taxes and savings and insurance, like all of your expenses. I know for the first few years when I did this, taxes was not something that I really thought about. And then when it was tax time come, I got a bill saying I owed money rather than getting money back. And it was because I didn't account for that throughout the year. So you really need to uh, understand the taxes and the savings part. And then you need to figure out the max number of weddings that you'd be willing to do. So, and that means like one more and it's like, you're done. Like I, I, I'm quitting this. So what is the max number? So whenever you have those two things figured out, then you can start <laughs> moving forward with this. So John, why don't you kind of talk through an example of this? Yeah, you need to know those numbers. So many of us just kind of do whatever. Um, in this example, it, let's say you need 60,000 a year to like survive. We're not talking about renting private jets. We're just talking about we need 60,000 a year to get uh, all of our bills paid, to pay our taxes, to have our lights on, to eat food. Um, and you don't want any more than 20 weddings in a year. Um, that's the number for you. I can't handle more than 20 or I'm going to crack. If you do that, um, you're going to need $3,000 per wedding. Um, simple, easy enough formula. Um, the question you have to ask yourself is on the next slide, is that price point realistic in my market um, with my skill set and network? Um, and that's, that's something you really have to look at in your market and say, um, hey, is, is this price point something that can I, I can justify? Is $3,000 a month or a wedding? Um, for my skill set, is that is that right, like right for me? Is my network good enough? Um, and then you have to ask yourself the next question: What are other filmmakers in my market charging? Um, that's something you can balance things off of and say: What are what are other people charging? If if you know what they're charging and you know your um, skill set and you know uh, how good you compare to them or how good your marketing is towards them or your network, things like that, you can know whether or not you're charging the right price. Nick? Yeah, yeah, and so Can after you, you kind charge of more than your current market? I think that's the question. 
Yes, yes, yes. Um, it is definitely possible uh, for you to charge more than your market or be at the very top of your market or, you know, even uh, kind of a little bit above. But there's a few things that you need to understand and know. One, your work needs to back up the price. If you are five hundred, a thousand, fifteen, two thousand dollars more than the next closest person in your market, then something about your work must stand out and must be different. Your customer experience needs to be more like a fine dining restaurant rather than a fast food restaurant. Uh, you all have that picture in your mind whenever I say fine dining and whenever I say fast food. If you are charging 15 to $3,000 more, a lot more than people in your network, in your market, but you're giving a fast food type of experience, it's not going to work out for you in the long run. Yeah, you might get one or two every now and then that we're gonna pay that extra stuff, but if you're not excelling in that customer experience, uh, then that is going to uh, fall through the cracks. Your relationships with other vendors, what are they like? Are you uh, good with them? Are you referring them? Are you helping them? Are you going above and beyond for the other vendors? Um, th that's gonna be a thing that will help you uh, go higher and higher up on that price. And then are you getting referrals from those other vendors, but also your previous couples? And if you are doing all of these things and you're doing them all well, you are going to be able to charge more than maybe what your network or your market, I'm sorry, your local market says that you should be charging. One thing that I really want to stress here and one thing that I want to let you all know is just because you want to charge a certain, certain price doesn't mean that you get to charge a certain price. Uh, I've heard you know, uh, videographers and photographers and other vendors saying, well, I'm an $8,000 photographer. I'm an $8,000 photographer. Oh yeah. Well, what's the highest package that you've ever booked? 3,500. Well, you're not an $8,000 videographer. You're a $3,500 videographer. Now, do you have the ability to raise and change and move that up? Yes, you absolutely do. But just because we want something doesn't mean that we can do that where we are there. Like I, I was saying, there are things and steps and things that you need to do. It's possible, but work needs to go in. So there we go, John. Yeah. All of these things, um, they really do factor into what you're worth in your market. So be thinking about that with your, your pricing and what you want to charge. You know, it's like, um, does your work back that up? Does your network back that up? Does your, do your relationships, do your referrals and, uh, like you said, Nick, just because you want a certain amount doesn't mean that that's how much you're going to get, but it's great to know how much you want and to know what is out there so you can work towards that goal. Um, all of these things do factor into what you're worth in your market. And then mm -hmm. the question I think that we want to move into when we're talking about building packages that sell is how should you structure your offer, what you're offering to your couples? Should you offer collections um, where you have, you know, two or three packages options? Should you offer a la carte, which is maybe they get to pick and choose based off of just like a list, maybe a hybrid option where you have a base package or two packages and some a la cartes or just completely custom. Um, and we're going to break down some of those today. And it's different based on you know, your numbers, what's important to you, how many you already have booked. It's different for every single person, but it is like a formula. And so you can kind of figure out which one of these work for you. So Nick, why don't you give us a little bit of maybe pros and cons of some of these? Yeah. So um, we're going to kind of just walk through um, what all these are and I'm going to do some examples, but a collections. So this one is going to be, you know, let's say you have the three options. Three is very, very popular. You have a low, a middle and a top and kind of the pros with this is you're able to uh, lay things out there and you're able to kind of show all of your offerings that you have. Uh, this really works. A big pro is this really works with um, pretty much any financial level, like from the low, low end to the middle, to the high middle, to the top, like uh, a collection system like this uh, is, is works for everything. Um, one of the cons that it, I think it's a little bit harder to um, do some upselling. Um, you know, if, it's kind of like they book that top package and then that's what they get. And, and it's kind of like everything in the kitchen sink is included in that because the price is high, but then they want more time or they want this or whatever, you know, you might not be able to, um, make more per their wedding. Uh, that's, that's kind of a, a little bit of a con uh, that I see with this one. Um, but anyway, collection is something, this is something I, I'm kind of more in the custom 
area, but I'm definitely doing a collection kind of system with this and it works, works well for us. So let's move on to the a la carte. And John, what do you have to say about the a la cartes? Yeah, a la carte is where you literally have everything listed out and you can say, pick and choose whatever it is that you would like. Um, so if that's what you're, you're wanting to do, uh, you know, you got pros where it's like your customer can really get everything that they want. Um, they can customize it for their specific needs. The cons are maybe they don't think they need something that you should have uh, in the collection. It gives them a lot of the power when it comes to uh, they think they know what they want before you have a chance to really show them what value you could bring by doing different services. Um, this could serve anyone, uh, any market, low price to high prices. I've seen people do this in an upper uh, middle kind of range, um, where it's just like, Hey, here's, here's the menu, pick what you want. Uh, customer service, you know, is not super important at this point. It's like, here's what I offer. Just pick some stuff and move on. And I think a lot of people do this too with, um, the collections option. So mm -hmm. like they'll just throw them the collections instead. And we'll talk about that in a little bit, but, um, that's kind of who the a la carte is serving. Um, Anything you want to add to that, Nick, before no, we move I think on to that, hybrid? No, no, I think that was good. And the hybrid, what that is, is uh, it's kind of joining a little bit of the uh, collection idea and the a la carte idea. And so uh, whenever I have done this, I know John has done this in the past. It was like, here is my base that I have, and you know, it'll be a six minute film, eight hours of coverage, ceremony and toasts, or, you know, something like that. Um, and that's like, that's stock, that's standard, that's what everyone has to get but I don't have anything else. Or maybe you have something that's really, really expensive that's like the all-inclusive or something like that, which is, is is something that we did. But then you have all of your a la carte pricing listed with it. So it's like they get their base and then as you're continuing to talk and um, figure things out about the wedding, they can add things uh, more to this. So, um, you know, the pro is, is it gives options Oh, I, I think a big con for some people is that this one actually does take a lot more uh, selling. It takes a lot more conversations. It takes, mm -hmm. um, you know, you putting yourself out there and really guiding them. And so it, that's out of the comfort zone, I think, for a lot of people. And so you might... Um, just be just be wary of that, but I or maybe not wary. Be know that that okay. is something aware. That's the word I was looking for. So be aware of that. But I I think that you can um, you know kind of serve. Uh, I don't know. It worked really well in kind of that mid high high range budgets mm -hmm. for me to do to do the hybrid. If I can add two cents here, please the high, please add two cents. Like you think about collections work really well for people. Um, as they're getting going, as they're getting established, and some people stay with the, like a three collection system forever, and that works, or four collections. I moved to this, the hybrid, once I got to somewhere in like that eight to ten thousand dollar range five six years ago, and this gave me like the best of both worlds with like two different package options. I had um, the essentials, and then I had the all inclusive, and they're like they could pick the all inclusive, and it, it covered everything. Um, the essentials had most everything with like an a la carte next to it. Um, and it gave them and gave me the ability. I enjoy meeting with the couples multiple times and like really uh, upselling things throughout the process. And it yielded a way higher return on uh, the investment of time um, by offering, you know, I had to have a six month out meeting and a three month out meeting. But this hybrid collection um, was really good for me in like the beginning to get into some of these luxury price markets. And I think it also works in a luxury market. Like I really do. I think a hybrid is a very good option and worth considering if you've been in business for a handful of years, or if you already have a lot of really good bookings and your prices, like you keep raising your prices and nobody is balking at your prices. Like this is a good way to like kind of have an unlimited number you can make um, with hybrid uh, you know, with the starting packages and things like that, and then a la carte items. Um, and then the last thing, Nick, which I've moved to, um, mm -hmm. I'm in a different mm -hmm. state of business, is a completely custom. Um, and that is, I, I have in my mind, I know kind of like what every couple is going to get, but after talking with each specific couple, I custom build them a proposal 
that fits them exactly to their needs. This is a very fine dining type experience. I'm not just saying here, look at all these options. I'm saying I'm going to get to know you and I'm going to tell you what it is that I'm going to offer you. And it's more of a service. Um, I'm not going to just give them a ton of options. I might say, Hey, here's what you should do. Here's what you could do. Um, but I'm building those custom every time they end mm -hmm. up kind of being the same collections that I'm offering. Um, yeah. a lot of them involve travel or different excursions or different days or different events and things like that. And so I custom build it around their timeline and things like that, um, to include the things that really matter to the ethos of my brand. A lot of people are like, we don't need the rehearsal or we don't, we don't need that welcome party. I'm not giving them that option, not because I'm mm -hmm. a jerk, but because I don't want to be at those weddings today. If I can't do all the things that I know that they're going to really want to get them uh, to be happy. And so custom is for people usually in a high end price point, uh, major pros is that you get to customize it based on what you think is best for them. Um, cons, it's more work. You're spending more time. You're sometimes writing proposals that take you half an hour to do or, um, but it mainly serves the upper end markets. Nick, I've talked for a while. What do you yeah. want to add about the custom stuff? No, I, I think that if um, it is definitely a good way to go, probably the biggest con is it is going to be um, the two. It's going to be more selling. Uh, you're going to have to talk more, you know, get that stuff. So you just need to fine tune those muscles. Um, and then also, you know, building a custom proposal and sending that to every couple that you're meeting with, um, you know, it just takes a little bit of time to do it. But there are, uh, it can definitely, definitely, definitely pay off. And so I think a question that maybe some people might be asking out there is which one of these options is the best? Which one? should I do? Should it be the collection? Should it be the a la carte? Should it be the hybrid? Or do I do custom? And the answer to that question really is it totally depends on you and how you run your business. Um, the thing that, that you need to do while you are deciding how to offer your packages and how you're offering your collections and how you're doing that is you have to be intentional with the services that you offer and how you are presenting them and how you are doing, um, how you are doing them. And, and it's in, in, I think I, for the longest time when I was running my business and I was doing all of these things, I was just, again, seeing what stuck to the wall and I wasn't thinking through and I wasn't being intentional and I wasn't figuring out who excuse me, who my clients were and the people that I wanted to work with and all that kind of stuff. And so I needed to be uh, very intentional about things. And um, as you start to charge more, you need to be intentional about even stuff is like the little details, uh, like the fonts that you use and the colors and how you word stuff and that kind of thing. So here we have a couple words that I'm throwing up on screen here. Collection versus packages just using those two words, collection versus packages, which, which one sounds better? Which one sounds more elegant? Which one sounds more high end? And as you start charging more and more money, we have stopped using the word package and started using the word collection because it sounds better. It sounds more high end. And so as you think about the wording that you use, the phrasing that you use, how you sign your emails, how you put stuff in your, uh, you know, how you're showcasing off the things that you're offering, um, those little things matter. If you are like most wedding filmmakers, you are constantly fighting against being completely overwhelmed from your backlog. We get it, and that is why we are so excited to bring you HowToFilmWeddings.com slash outsourcing, a brand new place for you to find some of the best editors on the planet to help you get out from under the weight of your backlog. And the best part is we have personally vetted these companies to ensure that you aren't wasting your time finding editors. Whether you are looking for full-blown editors like Weditor or Brideandgroom.video, or if you're just needing someone to cull your films like Wedding Post House, we have a solution for you. So head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing to check out our curated list of outsourcing experts today. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash outsourcing. John? Yeah. And you don't have to use the word collections. You could say offerings. You could say, I mean, you could do whatever you want, but I think the point is every little detail starts to matter a lot. Um, our friend Lindsay with Larev Films, you know, he's talking about uh, 
he's basically made it to the Super Bowl, to the, the pros when it comes to what he's charging. And at that level, every single detail matters so much. He's very protective about what goes on in social media and the words that are used and how they use them and the fonts and like every little detail. And, and that's the case with White and Reverie or Blink Films or Bottle Brush Films. Or you start thinking of these companies that are like doing their own thing, but charging top dollar and getting the weddings that they want is that they pay attention to these fine details. And so, um, you know, just looking at these things, um, you really want to. You want to think, you know, if you watched our training last week about how important things are with your brand, this really starts to matter. Um, mm -hmm. And then a little hot take. It's on the screen already. Um, no matter what structure you're using, uh, hear us out. But we recommend a custom proposal for each couple of some sort. Um, doesn't mean that you have to go in and hand make a new proposal every single time. Um, but even if you're a volume brand, like if you had a PDF that you could change the names out and export each time or change the venue out, or, uh, maybe put one paragraph at the top of it that says, great talking to you today. These things seem like they're important. There's just something about that customization instead of just emailing over, Oh, I hate this. just emailing over a HoneyBook brochure. Please do not do that. Uh, like you want to give them a handcrafted experience no matter where you are in your business, this is going to help you book more weddings. So no matter the structure, we recommend custom proposals for each couple. Nick and myself, we have completely custom proposals, um, a template that we copy and paste um, that we change out for each one of our couples as we get inquiries, but it's very intuitive. We've paid lots of money to have that done. Um, mm -hmm, something that mm -hmm. might be a little bit better uh, for you if you're just getting going or in your first few years is some type of a PDF, some type of something that like one of our pricing guides or other thing like that, that maybe you build that you can send Nick. What do you want? To yeah. Add? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Recommend uh, those customer proposals. That's something that will definitely elevate um, your customer experience. Um, again, even just swapping out uh, names on those, writing a little thing. Hey, it was so great to talk to you. I'm excited about your wedding at this place. Something that gives a little more uh, hand hands on experience will be very, very beneficial. So in our experience in talking with so many people over the last few years, it seems that um, the three collection system uh, seems to be the most popular for most people. And so we wanted to kind of do a breakdown and just talk to you about things, uh, mistakes that we have seen, things that we have learned that we want to share with you whenever it comes to this. So a three collection system, we're going to do, I'm going to do a quick little breakdown here. So the very top um, of, of your three. And, and as you present these, we recommend doing the most expensive one is the very first thing that they see. And the reason is, is someone should see that and say, holy crap, that's expensive. Language. Okay. Yeah, I know. Uh, Blake <laughs> beat me, beat, bleep me out if we need to do that. Um, but it, it, it should be really high in the, in the person say, whoa, like shock them, you know, and that's kind of the anchor. So now they're anchored at, let's say, $5,000 when they have a $3,000 budget. They're like, whoa, I can't do $5,000, all right? And then you go to the middle one, which is what you really want them to book, and it's $3,000, and it's cheaper compared to the top, but whenever you go to the base one, it's just a price that kind of gets them in the door that is the least amount that you would walk out and film the wedding for, and so it looks really, really good compared to that base one, um, and so they want to, they gravitate towards toward that middle uh, collection, that middle package that you have. Uh, as, as you go about and how you have this structured, most people should book your middle collection. If you're doing a collection system, put it in the chat. What, what package are people booking the most from, from you guys? Um, put it in the chat. I'd just be interested to hear uh, what, what you have to say about that. So most people should book that middle one. When it comes to the middle collection, it should be, what, around 80-ish percent, 80, 85, like four out of five people should probably be booking that middle collection. If most people are um, booking your base, it's because you're offering too much for the price point. And if most people um, are booking your top, the price is too good for what's included in it. All right. So you should be restructuring those things so that it makes sense so that you're pushing them to um, the middle one. So, John, what what should be in that base collection as someone's kind of putting this together? 
Yeah, and as you were saying, the base collection, we talked to a lot of people that uh, show us, you know, what they're offering, and they have so much in that base collection, and they're like, well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't buy that package or whatever, and it's like, that's good. Uh, you don't want to be using trickery uh, to trick anyone to buying your middle collection, but you, you want the least amount in that base uh, that you would be willing to do. Um, so for that price point specifically, like let's say you say 2,500 is the cheapest I'm gonna charge. What is the least amount you would do and feel good about it to charge that $2,500? Um, and I think that if you've, you've tuned out, tune back in because wedding filmmakers highly undervalue what we offer. And we are so afraid to stand up for the prices that we really need to have that we're, we buckle and we cave. And it's really annoying to watch so many people not add the value. That, and that's what wedding, uh, how to film weddings is all about, is helping you be confident in the value that you bring. And so in that base, it just needs to be maybe, you know, we, we, maybe one shooter, four hours of coverage, a three minute music video, something very, very basic and simple, something that you'd mm -hmm. be willing to do, but you don't want to book it, but maybe once or twice a year, the least amount of stuff. Um, so Nick, a, a base might look like 2000, 2200 bucks, a three minute highlight, six hours of coverage and one videographer. Uh, why don't yeah. you talk a little bit about uh, pull throughs. What's going to get yeah. people to move, yeah. move to the next collection. So, so in our example at the beginning, you know, we said that a person, uh, needs to make $3,000 per wedding and they're going to shoot 20 weddings that year to make the, make the money that they need to, to survive for the year. So you need $3,000, uh, for, for your weddings. And so we're, we're saying in this example, they're going to come in under that at 22 with a very, very bare bones package, very, very bare bones collection. Okay. So then as you're building the, the collections out, what is the pull through to get them to the middle? What is the thing that they need to go to get from that lower amount to spending that 3000 that they need something of value to get them to the next tier? All right. That's, that's something that, that, that is the pull through. And we see this a lot that, um, people as they as they make that pull through as they make those things it's stuff that i most people don't really care about or aren't really thinking about okay so if we go to this next uh slide some examples so we have the base at 2200 and there's a three minute highlight six hours of coverage one videographer now for 800 dollars more they get a five minute highlight eight hours of coverage and two videographers with the ceremony and toasts okay again i'm just kind of pulling these out of nowhere you know but as you look at this, you can see that there are some really powerful pull throughs, more time shooting, longer film and ceremony and toasts. Okay. Those are good things that, uh, people are going to probably want whenever it comes to their collection. And then as we go to the next one, adding in a third, uh, tier to this, we have the top for $5,000, seven minute film, 10 hours of coverage, two videographers, the ceremony toast, and then you get a teaser film and then like a doc edit. Okay. So now those things, if you put any, if you put that FOMO edit or the teaser edit or something like in the base package, then it's going to totally negate people wanting to upgrade because they're getting so much value in that base collection there. John, what did I miss? I just heard you say negate. I don't, I, I don't know what that means, but that's cool. I like that. I've never heard you say that word. Um, quick little breather. If you're out there, take a, take a breath. I know there's a lot of uh, knowledge bombs being dropped right now. Um, if this is being helpful to you, do us a favor. This is our brand new YouTube channel, YouTube channel. Uh, we're just about to hit 500 subscribers. If you don't subscribe already, that would mean the world to us. And if this is helpful, uh, I see a handful of you in here. Uh, if you like the video that tells the algorithms that, uh, you know, we're okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So back to, back to the nature at hand. Um, yeah, I think yeah. we're going to move on to what your couples value. This is a big one, Nick, what your couples yeah. value might not be what you value. I talked to a lot of you out there and, and, and it's like, this is important to me. So that's, what's going to be the pull through. That's what's going to make people want to book more. Not the case. Nick, hit them with it. Yeah. Yeah. So a few years ago, we did a little poll on our Instagram account and I asked the question, what do you value more? A longer highlight film or more, 
more coverage time. Just, just asked out. Overwhelmingly, wedding vendors and people that had already been married said longer highlight film. People that were engaged or not yet married said more coverage time on the wedding day. Okay. I would have said as the videographer, I need, we need longer films. We need more stuff in it, you know, so you can have those memories. That's what I would have said. But I learned that coverage time to people that are not yet married matters to them way, way more. So I started adjusting and structuring my packages a little bit different. My collection's a little bit different. Again, you might off, you might value shooting in 4k and delivering that's in and I think that that's the way our world is going but your clients might not necessarily value that I mean I still see in our Facebook group that people are asking for DVDs in 2023 you know it the things that people want and the things that they value are just different so remember just because you value something doesn't mean that your couples do I would say this if you sh you should pull your specific audience uh, whether via Instagram or maybe sending a questionnaire to your previous couples or, um, but posting into your stories and just saying like, Hey, updating some of my collections and different things. What's more important to you, this or this, this or that. And like, have like a fun little poll that you do so you can gather data based on your market. Maybe in Sheboygan, the, the, va the value for time. It, that's a fun town. I, maybe for Sheboygan. Oh, uh, I think that's Michigan. Uh, if you're in Sheboygan market, Wisconsin. shout out to you, Wisconsin. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it's, yeah. It's, safe up. it's up there. But the point being is like maybe Sheboyganites, Sheboygonians don't value coverage time. Maybe they do. I don't know. But don't just take Nick's Instagram poll for it. His ideal clients, whenever they mm -hmm. were engaged, that was important. If you're doing a system to where you upsell things like we teach in our course, um, you might really put an emphasis on the coverage time on the front half and then inform and educate your couple as you're working with them. And even after the wedding day that they might want to add some length to their film after it's been booked. So many times I've added a thousand dollars or $1,500 for a longer FOMO type edit, like just a full doc of the day or a eight minute film instead of a six minute film because they are so excited after the fact to have a longer film. And so you can slowly add more things um, by doing that. Okay. I got off, yeah. I got off track collections no, versus good. a la carte or plus collections a la carte. and a la carte. So we want yes. to get into to this with your collections um, and with the pricing, we don't necessarily recommend for everyone that you should do a strict a la carte system. Uh, I think that that is very difficult and can be hard for a lot of people to just, just let people pick and choose. But we do recommend a collection or package system plus a la carte so that those a la carte a la carte offerings inform your collections okay your a la carte if, if someone takes um the items within your a la carte pricing and tries to build a uh, a collection that you are offering from those a la carte items the a la carte offering should be more expensive than the collection that you have out there uh, here's a quick example of that. I know John was saying how we as uh, filmmakers uh, undervalue ourselves, and we put pricing on stuff like, you know, no one's going to pay this. No one's going to pay this. Here is an example up here where the base is at 2200 and the a la carte set, it, someone's like, okay, they want me for more. It's $25 an hour. An additional filmmaker is going to be $200. And then an additional minute is going to be 75, meaning if you add you know, add minutes, you know, whatever. Now, if you take all those things, and I know there's differences and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just telling you what a client might be thinking. If you take all of those things and add them up and equate, you know, line to line, uh, three minutes of coverage. So three times, you know, 75, it's 225. Uh, a shooter is $200 of six hours. That's, you know, that's going to get you up to about less than 600 bucks. And so if it's less than 600 bucks, why in the world are they going to pay you 2200 for that base collection? So though those a la carte prices are not informing the uh, collection prices, but so you need to go in and adjust those. Now, if you go to, to the next slide where we say, okay, an additional hour is going to be 250. 
an additional videographer is going to be 500 an additional minute to your film is going to be 150 then you add all those things up and that's 2450 which is more expensive than that base of 2200 and yes i know there's nuances and things in here that like well it's not you know they're blocking off it yeah i get that but i'm just telling you what clients are probably going to be thinking if they go through and they look through uh your collections there so John, why don't you talk about, just for a second, maybe some uh, problems or some things that we have seen in people submitting their uh, pricing to us to be reviewed over the last few years? Yeah, I think the biggest one is that the prices like or, or what's offered is just all too close together, you know, and you can see in this example, uh, it's 2200 for the base, 2400 for the middle, 2600 There's just not enough like space between them. Um, and so that, that can be... Um, that can be a big issue if your collections are too close together. Other things we see with a collection, uh, the three collection system is there's not really a great pull through from base to middle, middle to top, top to ultra top. Low, I don't know, you know, that kind of thing. There's no great pull through. You need to know what those things are. Maybe couples are always asking you, does that include a drone or does that include a second shooter or does that include the raw footage? Or So you can kind of put value and say, oh, well, the raw footage is included if you bump up to the top collection. Or And so if you don't have good pull throughs, you don't know what those are, you are not listening to your clients um, on what they're asking you if, if that includes, you're going to be missing out on them bumping up from one package to the next. Um, the, the next thing that we see uh, with the with this system is that there's too big of a price jump between collections. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, in this example here, you've got 2200 then 4000 then 9000 It's like, whoa. Um, and I'm, I'm guilty of this. I used to have like a $5,000 option and then like a $9,500 option and there was nothing in between. Um, and so, you know, be thinking through, maybe I'm going to have, you know, a 2,200, a 4,500 or 5,000, then a 7,500. Something's a little bit more spread out that you can uh, see different values. And again, it all depends on your market, your network, your relationships, all these things to determine what these prices are. Nick, what else do you yeah. want to chat yeah. about? No, um, I, all, all this stuff I think is really going to be helpful. And in, in I think the, the biggest takeaway that we want you to have whenever it comes to setting up your collections and, and your pricing and putting all this together is just being intentional about it and thinking about why it is, um, you know, sharing it with someone who doesn't know anything about the industry. Like if you're really new and kind of figuring this out, that can help you explain, okay, if you're hiring a videographer, what do you think of these? Like what's important to you? Getting that feedback back, finding out those things that you have found are important to uh, your couples that are different than what you would value, right? Uh, one, one of the things that is, is a great uh, thing to do is to send out questionnaires to, um, you know, uh, previous couples and just ask them some of these questions. What did you value uh, from our services? What did you like before, uh, you know, the wedding day? And what did you value after the wedding day? So now you can kind of d figure out a plan for how to sell them and how to talk to them. So, um, yeah, yeah. I think this is all, has all been good stuff, John. What do you think? That is, that is neat. Yeah. The last little thing I'd like to say is we don't, we're not saying you have to do a three package system. If you want to do uh, like I did for the longest time, like two package options plus a la carte, you can still take these principles into consideration. When I had like yeah. a, uh, an essentials and then like an ultra, you know, it's like all inclusive. Um, I was intentional and I had heard from my clients again and again, it's just like, we just want to write a check and get everything that you have, just whatever that is. And so I built like a ridiculous all inclusive option that most people ended up going with. Um, and so having these things in your mindset, knowing your numbers, if you just take that away from this and you say, I'm going to write down how many weddings I really need. I'm going to run my bills. I'm going to know how much, like I'm going to get on the ball. You're going to be ahead of most other wedding filmmakers, especially in your area. And then you'll know what you can charge and you're not just saying yes to so many things or there's this freedom that comes with, Oh, I've booked enough weddings to cover everything. I don't have to say yes to you. I don't have to do this wedding unless I want to. And what happens is you slowly but surely start only taking weddings that are paying you what you're worth. And mm -hmm. they're the kinds of clients that you want to work with. 
it's not like a switch that flips between one year and the next. It's kind of like seasons changing and you can slowly but surely be like, wow, like I think I was eight or nine years into business before I really honed in on my brand and my marketing and all these things and all these fine details and knowing my numbers. And once I did that, about two years later, every one of my clients was like one of my favorite clients. And I was like, why didn't I do this before? Why didn't, cause we're so busy. We have so much going on. We already have so many in the backlog. I'll get to that later. It's always going to be later when you can get to these things, but you really should carve out time to do these things now. Okay. Off the soapbox. I'm down off the soapbox. John, thank you for um, doing the podcast with me. Thank you for being a part of this live training. Uh, we know again that it's, it's, it's good stuff. And I'm glad that we got to share this information with all of you. If you're on the fence about the course, just head over to completeweddingvideography.com. Check it out. It's everything that we have learned over the last 20-something uh, combined years of John and I filming weddings. It will really, really helpful, really, really help you. Help you. Goodness gracious. You get remember, choked up thinking about it sometimes. I, I it's so helpful. Gosh, gosh. Yeah. Remember... <laughs> <laughs> Remember, oh, we have that brand new shooting module uh, in there. It's over four hours. Uh, it's, we, we talk through our wedding day, but we're actually showing you what we're doing. It's really, really helpful stuff. John, thanks for hanging out with me. And until next time, listeners, we will see ya. See ya. Attention wedding filmmakers. The best resource for licensing music for your wedding films is Musicbed. I have been exclusively using Musicbed for about eight years and our films are better because of it. I hear a lot from our couples that reach out to us that our wedding films feel different, that the music isn't cheesy. Musicbed has a roster of incredibly talented musicians, bands, and composers who pour their hearts into their work and you can hear the difference. Find the perfect song with Musicbed's intuitive search features like genre, mood, beats per minute, and my favorite, key. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed to learn more and take your films to the next level. Use promo code HTFW23 at checkout to receive one month free with the purchase of an annual subscription. That's howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed.